The opinions expressed in this program reflect only those of the participants and are not necessarily those of the sponsors, management, or staff of WTBQ Radio or FST Broadcasting Corporation. WTBQ. Hey, this is Joe Danza, and welcome to the Creativity and Technology Solutions for Business and Life show, where we connect the creative dots and the technology ones as well to make sure that you're able to make informed decisions and creative ones as well. And today we're going to be talking to three thought leaders in the world about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, and not just Bitcoin, uh, but also the blockchain technology that'll make it viable, and also not to mention other applications that uh, blockchain has for other industries. It's just not about Bitcoin. It's about other industries that'll be able to use uh, blockchain technology to help people have better lives, businesses uh, function more, uh, what's the best way, more efficiently, you know, moving forward. And the first person we're going to talk to today is Dean Anastos. Dean is the founder of Blockchain Developers. And you can find them on the web at blockchaindevelopers.org, which, and they powered one of the most successful ICOs in history. And an ICO is an initial coin offering, an unregulated means by which funds are raised for a new cryptocurrency venture. And uh, Dean, welcome to the show. That's quite an accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. Um, we're, today, Dean, we're going to talk to you about you know, getting some background on Bitcoin, because there's a lot of confusion out there. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, things are things are changing very rapidly. For example, I know some lar one of the largest brokerage firms like Goldman Sachs and others have opened up a trading department, if I'm not correct. Correct. Yes. Uh, the, the, industry, the industry is getting excited about it. So now you're having traditional uh, firms and investment firms looking into investing in Bitcoin because of the potential returns that they can earn versus uh, the traditional investments. Yeah, so let's talk about it. What's a cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? I mean, Bitcoin is kind of a, a generic term like aspirin used to be, but we also have, yeah. there are actually Bitcoins and predecessors after that, but what's a cryptocurrency? And then let's talk about Bitcoin specifically. Yeah, well, um, Bitcoin is basically built on, on, on a technology called blockchain, and, and that's what makes uh, the technology itself so exciting. Uh, essentially, for 6,000 years in recorded human history, we've relied on centralized systems in where people or organizations had control of the ledger, of, of, of keeping track of transactions. Um, so, for example, banks, when you... When I, if I send you money, yeah. I, send, I, I send you money, if I have uh, $100 and I, I wire you that $100, there's a third party that's in charge of that. So that third party is, is, you know, we have to trust that third party. So if we have to trust it, that means they, what, they, they can breach that trust and they can violate that trust and they can profit off of us in, in, in ways that, you know, we may not know about. So what Bitcoin does, it takes out that element of, that, of, of needing a third party. Uh, so that's why they, that's why they call it the, blo the blockchain is called the trustless system. So instead of having a centralized authority and handling the transactions and keeping track of, you know, who owns, who, who owns what, the distributed ledger handles that in a decentralized fashion. So when I send you a Bitcoin, I'm actually sending it to you directly using the decentralized network to confirm the transaction. So we're cutting out the middleman here, essentially, right? We're cutting terms... out the... Exactly, exactly. We're cutting out the middleman. We're making the system more efficient and also more trustworthy. In terms of fees and, 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 and uh, different types of things like that, do they know who developed the, the first Bitcoin uh, out there, or is that still a mystery? Yeah, that's still a mystery. I mean, the, you know, obviously um, the paper that was written was, you know, was under the pseudonym of a person or a group called uh, Sata, Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> and that was written back in 2009. Yeah. The motivation behind that was, you know, as far as like what I wrote on the street um, was, you know, two things. One was, of course, that was during right around the time of the financial crash was one. And also when gambling, internet gambling became illegal. Mm -hmm. 
So they wanted they wanted to create a, a sort of internet money yeah. to be able to be outside the authority of government and banks. Yeah, how's uh, how's government reacting to this? Uh, I, I presume they're they're moving on it. Yeah, that, well, the, the the thing about governments, uh, you know, first they if they can't control something, they try to they try to ban it, of course, which is you know how they handle everything. They just make it illegal if it's something that's out, outside of their purview of, of of being able to to manage. But Bitcoin is one of those things that you can't shut down. It's decentralized. It's not a Napster. It's uh, it's something that's you know it's a peer to peer, a, a, a truly democratic form of of having a distributed ledger, and they can't shut it down. So the next step, obviously, is that since they can't shut it down, is now they're trying to work along with it. They realize it's not going anywhere, so yeah. now, that's why now you're starting to see it being integrated into society. And, in, in traditional investments. So what are people using Bitcoin for today? I mean, let, let me ask you this question. For example, have you you've seen those movies with Liam Neeson? Uh, sure. where, where they kidnap his daughter and they do it every time yep. or they kidnap his wife. Uh, and yep. then Liam Neeson goes and tracks them down and kills all of them. Uh, right. Uh, if I can't do that and they somebody gets in touch with me and says, we want you to pay a ransom that can't be traced, uh, you know, that's kind of one of the more infamous things I would presume that Bitcoin's yeah. used for. Or, or if somebody comes in and takes over my computer uh, and and locks it, they'll send me a thing saying, "Go send me four thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin so I can free up your network." Yeah. Well, I mean, unfortunately, crime. You know, every sort of uh, technology is susceptible. Is they're suspect to crime. I mean, even cash. Like, how much? How often is cash itself used for crimes? I mean, once there's a store of value of something, it's, it's yeah. always going to be used as a as a way to for payment. I mean, this so, is this is know, really not, kind of Dean. This is really kind of digital cash, right? In terms of its right. inability to be traced and whatnot, and, yeah, uh, and and it's not completely anonymous. I mean, it is anonymous in terms of you don't know who the account belongs to, but the blockchain is actually very transparent. If mm-hmm. I send you a transaction, yeah. you can then follow that transaction. You could follow. You could trace that transaction behind me, like where did I, what, what address mm-hmm. it came from. So there is a, some sort of, you know, where cash you have absolutely no way of tracing it. Um, in Bitcoin, there are some there are methods of, of tracing, it. and that's why even the IRS has something that they they call I think it's chain analysis, where they mm-hmm. try to figure out who's you know who, where that Bitcoin came from and, and if these people are paying their taxes. Sure. So what are some of the good uses for it? We, we talked about a couple of the nefarious. Are, are businesses looking to do to B2B with it? Are individuals, what are, what are people in businesses looking to do with Bitcoin in terms of transactions? Well, you know, obviously it, it, it opens up another method of payment. And so, so in some places, uh, you know, payments may be difficult. Like, in, for example, in, in countries like Venezuela, yeah. um, where you have a, an unstable currency yes. uh, and the people of Venezuela actually the people that did invest in in Bitcoin yeah. they actually hedged themselves uh, against the central bank yeah so well, that became you know that was a huge uh, benefit sure. uh, so businesses down there especially you know they they began using Bitcoin I have a lot of friends down there in Venezuela that actually saved themselves by investing in it oh absolutely and then, of course, yeah yeah well, I can, I can see, for example, Argentina, too, where there were issues, yep. fundamental issues with the economy there, and the country wouldn't let people convert things to American dollars. They wouldn't let them bring right. money out of the country. They were limited to gold. So, yes. you know, Bitcoin as yep. a medium where the government couldn't exactly trace it in those instances would certainly be beneficial. Yep. Or, or, or even exactly. it with China, too, because I know China is trying to crack down on it as well, because China yeah. limits its people to the transactions, what they save. They want to keep it internally in the country and their stock market. So it could certainly have positive benefits there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it gives people another tool, another, another form of option where, you know, like even like, for example, I had, a, a, you know, uh, someone that's talking about um, – Imagine losing all your money in a certain jurisdiction mm-hmm. uh, because the, the, the economy collapses and you yep. have a war that breaks out. Yep. If you're trying to get whatever wealth you have out of that country, mm-hmm. if you're trying to get it out in gold, you're most likely going to get robbed. If you had real estate value, yeah. that real estate value is worthless now. And yes. if you have Bitcoin, it's probably the only thing that you can do is get out of a war zone and you would still have your Bitcoin when you get back into a civilized area. 
Yeah, we've got a couple so minutes. Huge... Sure, sure, there could be good upsides to it. There, we got a couple minutes before we come up to a break. But, uh, you know, in the case of Argentina, I had relatives down there where they had rampant inflation and it disappeared. But he, here's the one question I have at Bitcoin with a Bitcoin now where we have the Bitcoin today that originally started. It's now worth each Bitcoin is worth about 15 what is it? Is it? Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, how, it's around six, sixty-five hundred right $6, now. Sixty-five hundred dollars for a Bitcoin. The only question I yeah. have then is uh, that becomes speculative, and that's where government gets really interested. What's interesting too is that a certain number of um, hedge funds now even have yep. Bitcoins as part of their portfolio. And, right. um, you know, I go back to the days of the, you know, as an economist, going back to the days of the tulips, uh, you know, in, yeah. in the Netherlands years ago. And, and that's a concern for me, especially if the blockchain technology has other applications for other industries. You know, that could be very positive. But when you have speculation on something like this, there's a problem. Now, I know there have other, been other predecessors, predecessors to the original Bitcoin that came out um, mm -hmm. uh, that are used more as a, is it correct to say, a, tra a medium? of transaction is that correct to say that aren't so crazy that aren't up to the you know haven't increased well, by yeah. ten thousand percent well the reason why bitcoin exploded is because it, it is the you could say it's the grandfather it's the it's the this the head han show it's the market leader they, they generally own about half the market share of the entire crypto right of the crypto market cap um but you know one thing about bitcoin and and the reason why it, 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 the price rises is because people realize that if we have mass adoption yeah. on, a, on, a, on, a, on a commodity that's scarce, there's yeah. only 21 million Bitcoins that will ever be made, and already 17 million or so have been uh, issued. So if we have mass adoption, uh, it, it, you start thinking about all the potential people that can own Bitcoin around the world. Yeah. You know, 21 million of them is not that many. There's 7 billion people on the planet. Well, we're going to have inflation with that. Anyway, <laughs> folks, we're talking to Dean Anastas. And uh, he, uh, Dean is an expert in the area of blockchain and Bitcoin. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Talk some more. Pocono Raceway is summertime. It's where the whole family can come for the day or camp out for the weekend. It's where fans can shake hands with the most famous drivers on earth. It's where tailgating is serious business. It's where first timers hang out with old timers and the racing is always a little tricky. Bring your friends, bring your family, just bring it. Pocono style. The ABC Supply 500, August 18th and 19th. Get your AV car tickets today at PoconoRaceway.com. Make any special occasion the memory of a lifetime with music to remember. From Sinatra to Rihanna, choose the local and award-winning DJs from Music Magic. They're experts at driving creative party ideas and games that shape a great time. They even do magic and comedy for every occasion. Give them a call at 845-986-5602 or text them at 914-393-7758. Music Magic is fully insured and provides local references, so give them a call today. Looking for your first home? Are you looking to sell your home but not sure whom to market your property to? Contact real estate expert Liz Ridgeway of Better Homes and Gardens Ran Realty in her Goshen office. Liz specializes in new construction, resales, and rentals too. Make the move with confidence with Liz Ridgeway by your side. Contact Liz at 294-7227, liz.ridgeway at Rand realty.com find your dream home with liz ridgeway better homes and gardens ran realty scott lask wealth management group builds a lifetime of income for their clients scott has over 32 years of satisfied clients scott will help you create a retirement plan for life by customizing a secure future for you and your family that fits your lifestyle and income scott's worked with his clientele through every economic climate and highs and lows and has kept them on the path to achieving a secure plan with long-term principal growth Contact Scott and start to plan a future for you and your family by visiting scottlask.com. The premier instructors at Independent Helicopters offer flight school classes where you can attain a private license, a commercial license, and instrument and CFI certifications, all at Stewart Airport in New Windsor. Learn emergency maneuvers in their Frosca Flight Simulator. 
Financing and scholarships are available. And WTBQ will award a fun-filled gift package to the 10th student to sign up for flight school. For more information or to become a student, visit independenthelicopters.com. This is Zach Crux, sports director for WTBQ. Tune in every weekday morning to the Frank Truatt Morning Show to get the latest news, scores, and info about your favorite teams and players. That's every Monday through Friday on the Frank Truatt Morning Show right here on WTBQ. WTBQ. Hey, this is Joe Dance, and welcome back to the Creativity and Technology Solutions for Business and Life show. And today we're talking about Bitcoin and the technology behind it. Uh, we're talking about blockchain, and we're talking to uh, Dean Anastos, and he's the founder of Blockchain Developers. And uh, let me ask you this question, Dean, because um, people are concerned that it's the Wild West out there. Is there anyone in charge of blockchain, blockchain technology that's out there today that is kind of the, the ledger, the arbiter, so that people can see that they think the transactions have been fair, that people do actually have Bitcoin that have value and they have transactions going back and forth? It, there must be somebody in charge of it. It's either God or it's some <laughs> digital monster out there. Uh, who is it? I mean, who's setting the standards for this? Well, the good thing about Bitcoin is that it's open source. Right. So the code, the Bitcoin code itself can be read by anybody that understands code. Right. Um, and, you know, that's what makes it beautiful is that you know exactly what the code behind it is, 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 is how it's written and what exactly it does. Mm -hmm. um, and Bitcoin itself, obviously, it's not ran by anyone in specific. It's yeah. actually run by something called the consensus, uh, a, a form of consensus where you have multiple computers around the world that all have to agree with each other using cryptog a combination of cryptography and, and puzzles um, and consensus to, to record the transactions that are going on on the Bitcoin network. And they all agree with each other. And when they agree with each other, that's the, that's the power of, of Bitcoin, where you don't have to have a central authority to do that. Sure. Instead, tens of thousands of machines all agree with each other that this is my balance and this is your balance. Oh, okay. So you're, and, you're talking about peer-to-peer. -peer. I mean, is this artificial intelligence, yeah. too, or what is it? No, no. No, it's not, it's not AI, but it is peer-to-peer. Um, Why don't you explain what peer-to-peer like, -peer is for everybody out there? You and I both know. But um, – Yeah. Uh, maybe well, yeah, some of the music peer. examples in the past we could talk about some of the companies. That yeah, peer to peer, to peer um, where, for example, in a peer to peer network is people that are are contributing to the network mm -hmm. and using the network simultaneously. So instead of having a central server where everyone acts as it was in the case for Napster, and it was why Napster was able to be shut down by the government yeah. because they had all this illegal music on there. Yeah. Instead, where now you have stuff called torrents, where people are basically doing the same thing, sharing music through torrents, but torrents operate on a peer-to-peer -peer level. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's thousands of people out there with a copy of a file, and they're able to communicate with each other, and that's why So there's no central location to shut it down. Bitcoin network operates in a similar fashion, except it's a distributed ledger. Uh, and it's actually quite opposite in the tech, in, term, in form of the technology because bitcoins itself can't be copied. Um, they're unique. Uh, you know, your balance is your balance, and you know I can't add more bitcoins to my account because if I tried to do that, there wouldn't be any consensus on that, and the rest of the bitcoin network would throw me out because my my books are different than everyone else's. So if they're different than everybody else's, so if I wanted to open up a bitcoin account tomorrow. <laughs> And, and, yeah. and let's say purchase it, how would I do that? Well, I mean, there's a number of ways you could do that. Um, you know, there's one company, like, for example, called Coinbase, that makes it really easy for people to mm -hmm. do it. And, you know, they're doing, I mean, there's a lot of complaints, but most of the complaints are related to the size of, you know, the speed of their growth. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to buy a Bitcoin, you could go through them, purchase a, purchase a Bitcoin, and you can actually hold it in one of their wallets, which is not, I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't do that as soon as I purchase it. I would want to. Yeah. Bring it to my own private wallet. Yeah, or a vault, right? And we're probably going to talk or about. Yeah, we're we're going to talk to yeah. somebody later on about their own vault to protect it because typically, if if you own something, there's always somebody out there that wants to get it. 
uh, or right. get their hands mm-hmm. on it. And, uh, you know, we, we can, we'll, we'll talk about that too. Um, you know, what other, what other, for your segment of the show, what other industries does, um, What's the best way to put it? For for what other industry? What other industries are going to be impacted by blockchain? And we're not talking oh, about okay. bitcoins here necessarily, but some of the other yeah. uses from government, elections, things like that, moving forward. I, I know there's a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, potential. there's a lot. I mean, as an example, one of the projects that we're currently working on is called Kryptonite. And Kryptonite <laughs> is a, is a, a project that's basically three assets on the blockchain. So these assets, people will be able to, you know, typically if you wanted to get into an asset across overseas, to get in and out of an asset will take you anywhere between 90 to 120 days, and it could cost you up to 15% of the value of the asset. Mm -hmm. We're changing that business model a little bit, and we're going to reduce it. the reduce to the price of getting in and out of an asset down to 1% or 2%, and the speed to get in and out of an asset will be reduced from 90 days to practically instantly, as long as it's, uh, it take, it'll take you as long as reading a, a legal document. Give me an example so of an asset that we're talking about here. What are we? What are we talking about specifically well, in terms of an asset? Are we talking about a fixed okay, asset? So, are we yeah, talking so, about a liquid? What? Well, look, you could say, like for example, uh, in the uh, because crypto I specifically tied into the high end luxury market, mm-hmm. and the high end luxury market, a lot of these. You'll have like a $40, $50 million asset that's uh, located overseas. And generally, these assets are fractionalized and, and sold off uh, or, or people have memberships in these assets, you know, traditionally. So people can share it. Almost like it's not exactly a timeshare, no. but the way that the, traditionally how that works, people would be, be able to buy a, a percentage of that, use it a percentage of the, uh, a certain time of the year. And then whenever they want to get out, they can always sell it. But it's a big process to do that. It's very costly. It's very. It's a very liquid market. So we're we're introducing that basically that similar model, um, but putting that entire thing on the blockchain. Right. So by putting it on the blockchain, it would speed up all the transactions and reduce costs tremendously. Right. So as an asset, it could be. Could it be a building, a business? It could be a, yeah. Any high end luxury asset could be a jet. Could be a mm-hmm. a, a, a super yacht. It could be an estate, an island, huh. you know, any, any, anything that you could think of in terms of what a high luxury asset could be. That's exactly what uh, the company's targeting. Boy, the world really is becoming a smaller place, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's exciting, though. In terms so, of your, your ability to do that, sure. Yeah. So that's one. I mean, then there's an, uh, you know, other companies that, are, that we're working on are, are related to insurance. Uh, like, like cover it. They're the uh, blockchain insurance company that's going to make getting insurance and, and, and you'll be able to pay in cryptocurrency and the actual insurance pool would be pools of, of cryptocurrency. So it's definitely uh, a different model than the traditional model, but sure. this is an example of the direction that the world is going in and that our, you know, our company is helping achieve that. Sure. So also, you know, with any technology like blockchain, you see disruption. What are going to be the... Uh, Really quickly, what are going to be some of the industries that are going to be disrupted most? Uh, every, I, every single industry is going to be disrupted, even the way we govern nations, mm-hmm. um, the way we vote, everything. Yeah. There's nothing that's not going to be affected. I mean, the, the probably the thing that get least affected is your corner grocery store. <laughs> but the higher, the, the larger the industry, the larger footprint the industry has in our lives, right. those are the ones that are going to be most affected, which is like you see with banks and governments themselves. Yeah, I was going to think government. Certainly, governments from a lot of different perspectives. Uh, yeah, they might be concerned about money laundering too. Uh, you yeah. know, but like you said, banks too. If you're cutting out the middleman in terms of payments transactions, but I presume the banks yeah. are probably going to adapt the technology as well, and and maybe they'll try to buy your expertise down the road, right? Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the issues that, you know, because you mentioned anti-money laundering, which is, of course, a very important thing. Yeah. We cover that already in the blockchain industry. I mean, like, for example, again, in any of the ICOs that we launch or any of the projects, you know, we have to know who you are. You have to go through uh, what's called the KYC AML process. We have mm-hmm. to know your customer in anti-money laundering okay. um, to, to do a background check. So we're not selling uh, cryptocurrency to anyone that knocks on the door. Good. We have to know who you are. 
and we, we run you through a list called, you know, the OFAC list to determine if you're a terrorist. Sure. Well, that was um, the other so, issue, too. Terrorists as well. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. anytime you have, uh, you know, anonymity. Folks, we've been talking to Dean Anastos. He's given us a great primer on uh, cryptocurrency. And uh, we're going to take a break here and talk to another expert. Dean, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. The Orange County Fair Speedway in Middletown invites you to the House of Power Saturday night, August 11th, for Law Enforcement Night. Come and enjoy the Speedway's newly renovated grandstands. Have a drink with fellow race fans at the 31st Lap Tavern. There's a new track surface, raising the excitement with the big and small block modifiers, sportsmen and street stock, dirt bikes, quads. Join us Saturday at the Speedway in Middletown. Check out their schedule at WTBQ.com or visit their Facebook page at OCFS Racing. Here's what's coming up at the Warwick Summer Arts Festival. On Saturday, August the 11th, come to Dusklit. It's the East Coast One Night Interactive Art Festival. Dusklit is presented on the historic Seligman Homestead in Sugarloaf. Come to the Warwick Drive-In for a film festival on Thursday, August the 16th. It's the annual One Night Film Festival of Short Films at the legendary Warwick Drive-In Theater. For more information on upcoming events, go to warwicksummerarts.com. Hi, this is Grace Warren, a licensed real estate agent for Better Homes and Gardens Rand Realty for more than 17 years, and I'm ready to hear your wants and needs, and then I will help you fulfill your goals. As a full-time residential specialist and longtime resident of Orange County, I know the Orange County market very well, and whether you're a buyer or seller, my priority is your satisfaction. For more information, please visit my website, gracewarren.randrealty.com, and let's get together. Win two tickets valued at $1,000 to Pocono Raceway. Witness this spectacular Indy race August 18th and 19th with drivers hitting speeds over 240 miles per hour. Win two Skybox tickets including food and drinks in a private glass suite high above the tricky triangle. Email 100 words or less about why going to this race means so much. Deadline is Saturday, August 11th. The winners will be announced Monday, August 13th. During the morning show, email your entry to taylor at wtbq.com. Hi, this is John Tesh. Tune in for great music and intelligence for your life Monday through Saturday starting at 3 p.m. as we assemble the tips, the facts, and the news you need to be happier, healthier, more lovable, and more fun to be around. On WTBQ, radio worth listening to. WTBQ Another hot and humid day in store today. Partly sunny skies to start the daytime with some patchy fog. Be watching for a midday shower or thunderstorm. Though widespread activity expected in the afternoon. Temperature in the upper 80s. Heading into tonight, mostly cloudy. Scattered showers and thunderstorms are likely. Our low falling to near 70. Then for Thursday, mostly sunny skies. Still watching for an isolated shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon. Our temperature in the middle 80s. From the WTBQ Weather Center, I'm WeatherWorks meteorologist Nathan Wiles. WTBQ. Hey, this is Joe Dance, and welcome back to the Creativity and Technology Solutions for Business and Life Today show. Today, we're talking about uh, uh, technology, we're talking about Bitcoin, and we're talking about blockchain. Uh, which is a way to basically conduct, uh, help conduct transactions, verify them, kind of a, uh, a digital ledger, let's say. And um, any time, as I, as I had said to uh, Dean and Anastos before, uh, you know, if I buy a Bitcoin, where am I going to store it? Because, uh, you know, this is one of those things, uh, this digital cash that can be used with anonymity, People can also steal it from you as well. And uh, to talk about uh, protecting your uh, your Bitcoin is uh, Kevin Barry. Kevin is the CEO of Mintum, and they employ a blockchain cryptography-based uh, architecture to offer a trusted digital hot vault. And uh, Kevin, are you there? I am. Thanks for having me. Good. So I've got Bitcoin now, and... Like anything else on the web, you know, we talk to people and they say, well, how do you make sure you don't get a virus? 
uh, for your laptop. Well, don't don't turn it on and, uh, on the web. You know, just don't turn it on. That's the best way to do it. Keep it in its own sandbox. Where does your company come in when it comes to making sure that if you have digital currency or other digital types of, let's say, assets, uh, how do you protect them? And is, is that your play? That is our play. Uh, we're, we're a startup, so we don't have a product on the market yet. Uh, mm -hmm. We're launching a, a token generating event, which is what they call I ICOs. It used to be an initial mm -hmm. coin offering, but right. that sounded a little too much like what the SEC um, <laughs> uh, uh, doesn't like. So there's a little too close to IPO. So now it's a TGE. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, but that's our idea. Um, well, that's what was the initial inspiration is. Uh, Right now, too many people who are holding crypto uh, currencies, they leave them on the exchanges. And, yep. uh, and the other option is to take it all the way offline into cold storage, uh, like a Ledger Nano, or uh, just print the code down on a piece of paper and stick it in a drawer. And obviously, uh, there's, uh, neither of those are, are good solutions because the, the exchanges are obviously magnets for hackers. If there's 100,000 customers yep. at a, on a Coinbase or uh, Mt. Gox, which has famously got hacked, uh, that's where the hacker's going to go. So uh, I think, and the other thing that I think that people who are novices in this uh, arena uh, don't fully understand is how 24-7 the crypto exchanges are. It's not like uh, the, the exchanges we're familiar with in the yeah, States sure, where it opens at 9.30 and it closes at 4 and everyone goes home. It never right. closes. <laughs> it's Saturday. You go to sleep, you wake up, you know, something bad can happen. So, um, uh, yeah, so there's an enormous opportunity uh, for uh, trying to secure uh, these, these digital assets. Yeah, now your background is very unique. You're a former assistant U.S. attorney at the Southern District uh, Court of New York, and uh, you're also a, uh, I believe, a member of the United Nations Blockchain Group. Uh, where does, uh, I presume, your expertise in both areas is, is coming to bear because this has international a applications and implications? It, it does, and, and that's one of the most interesting things about it. Um, the United Nations is, is very interested in, in the applications that, that this can have. Um, and I thought you, you and Dean had a very good conversation earlier. I enjoyed it. Uh, but one of, one of the real-world applications is uh, like tracking aid in the United, in the United Nations. So mm. people give all kinds of money to Red Cross, to, to, to the UNGO, uh, to NGOs. And then if it, uh, can you tell whether the aid you're giving is getting to where it's supposed to go? Right, yeah. a lot of people. The check comes in, and then who knows what happens? Is is the is the food? Does it make it past the dock where it's supposed to go? Sure. So with blockchain, you can actually track, uh, almost like the same you track a FedEx package. You make a yeah. donation, you can track that it make sure it gets to its destination. Could you, which could, is could, you add, could would that function in Haiti, in a place where would, a billion yeah. dollars disappeared? How do you set something up? How do you set something like that up? Uh, well, first you need government buy-in. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times the, the governments uh, don't want the transparency. You know, blockchain is sure. transparent. And, and like you said earlier about, about hmm. um, when you and Dean were talking about uh, like things like uh, money laundering, yeah. um, it, it's, it's not the, – the blockchain is actually transparent. It might be hard yeah. for people to, to unwind transactions, but it's right there in the open. So it, it's, it's – uh, uh, and I think for things like aid and, and one – the – NGO I'm part of is, is uh, based uh, is originally from the Ukraine. Yes. And Ukraine is uh, pioneering uh, land records on blockchain, mm. which is I think a great idea. Yeah. Especially you know if you've lived in an environment like that where over a hundred years you know who owned the farm has changed five times based on who who controls the politics. Uh, so the, sure. you can't erase the land records when the fascists take over for the communists, oh, wow. and then the new revolution comes in. You know, like so you I can get my house back in Cuba from the government, right? Right, right. <laughs> well, at least there be a, there would be an immutable record of it. You know, yes. whether you can get it. You know, like there's a different story. Wow. Well, uh, you know, the other thing too is from what we were discussing before. One of our issues certainly is with foreign aid, and like you said, uh, the way we maybe social security, other types of benefits are doled out. Uh, you know, uh, can it be leveraged in terms of foreign relations where we can leverage it to make the, the technology to make sure that people do the right thing? Uh, I think so. I, I, again, any, any time you can track what, what you're giving, um, 
uh, in, in military aid, anything. Anything that can be digitized can sure. be tracked on the blockchain. So you just have to digitize it first. Yeah. Uh, and, and just one other thing I wanted to pipe in, uh, uh, well, two things, actually, from you and Dean's conversation, you sure. know, for people who are novices at this. Uh, the, the main thing that, that blockchain does that, that, that current um, fiat markets don't is it's, uh, it's the double spend issue, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, if you have a cryptocurrency, but all of the time, the, the additional time it takes to, uh, to mine, the mining is, is someone verifying that my, I have what I have and I'm sending it to you, right. that our accounts are, are legit. That's the, that's the mining. Sure. So Wall Street and banks want that for their end-of-day settlements, mm. right, for end-of-day settlements. But sure. during the day, they don't want to tie up every dollar for dollar. Yeah. During the day, while the trading markets are open, they want to use the same dollar 30 times. Yeah, there used to be the issue of T1, T2 in terms mm. of uh, uh, trading, in, in terms of uh, different types of securities and things like that. Can, it, can that speed up the process there, too, or is it not relevant to that? I think it's it's more the end of the day transaction that it's going to be that it's going to be um, when they're settling accounts at the end of the day it's, mm -hmm. it's a it's a better system than anything that they currently have and that that's that's what th those are the systems that they're setting up they're they're very aware of the power of it because uh, it, it again it's it's trustless you know that that's the hard thing to wrap your <laughs> mind around right you know like yeah. it's like so what what do you trust theoretically it's the big banks you trust that sure. that. That the Federal Reserve, well, uh, and, and as Paul Krugman wrote in the Times last week, uh, that the U.S. dollar has value uh, because men with guns say it does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I See, just, it's an argument yeah. for the Second Amendment. Which <laughs> 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 no, is crazy, right? Yeah, but, right. Uh, but you know, but crypto, if uh, like the true believers in crypto, yeah. like that, that is just feeding their. Yeah. That's like exactly what's wrong with the system, right? Yeah. Is you shouldn't have to, uh, you know. Why can't people do peer to peer? And, and here's the other other thing. And this is uh, not to be too lawyery from my background, but uh, crypto, because it's so borderless, mm -hmm. doesn't have a very good dispute resolution system, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If you're doing a crypto exchange with someone else, and it goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, well, where exactly can you complain? What's the jurisdiction? There yeah, who's the, who's the arbiter in this? And I, I guess that's why one of the things I had mentioned to Dean before was, you know, uh, is it going to be the Wild West? And obviously there's going to have to be faith in a bunch of servers that are running around the world that are going to have, let's say, democratic ideals. Is that the issue? Yes, I think that's right. But it, but it also, I think it puts it on you, the consumer, or you, the business, to protect your own, which is what, why... Why that's that's the, another inspiration for Mintum, is that that it, it's really on you to protect your own assets. Right. Don't don't rely on the bank to do it. Don't rely on Google to do it or Amazon or Facebook. You if, if it's important to you, protect it. So we're we're looking to protect your critical digital assets, whatever they are. Um, uh, it's, uh, crit to me, a critical digital asset would be would be crypto, would mm -hmm. be tokens that you might have bought in an ICO. Uh, it could be passports, your passport information, your mortgage information, your health records, uh, anything that's important. Um, sure. the, the, your, uh, the email that, that will protect you if your boss tries to fire you. Uh, you know, <laughs> anything right. that's digital and important sure. to you, put it in a little corner of the web. Uh, that's a, a Mintum vault that you own. Uh, and uh, uh, the the analogy would be like a, a virtual safe deposit box. You don't right. put your whole life in your bank safe deposit box. You put your important things in there. And this is what your company, uh, as it evolves, is going to provide, right? Correct. Right. Very good. What's your biggest challenge right now? It's you see going forward. Um, is it in terms of? Uh, you know, early adapters, you're going to have people on the high end of the market uh, looking to do this because they're fairly sophisticated. Is that who you're targeting here? The, 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 uh, the, the one, we're going to, I don't want to use the word 1%, but we'll say the 10%. Is that uh, who you're looking towards? Uh, not really. I'm looking longer term. I'm looking yeah. at, the nine, at the 99%. Okay. And and uh, but it'll be versatile enough that it can work for both. Uh, so here's a couple of, um, of ways it can it can help uh, both big and small. Yeah. So if you're uh, uh, say you're a hedge fund guy mm -hmm. and you have 50 clients and you want to have um, 
about it. And you need to be a custodian of their cryptocurrencies. Mm. You need to have it in one place. You need to have access to it. You need to have your customer have access to it. But you don't want all 50 of your customers to be able to see what the other 50 customers have, right? Right. So you have 50, you have a mint vault per customer. And you, they're, 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 you're a custodian of their assets. That your customer can see it, you can see it, and it's pr- protected to just just you and whoever you give permissions to. Yep. Yep. On the other on the other side, and here's where I, I think is the enormous opportunity is cryptocurrencies right now are barely usable. Mm. Uh, that it's there's approximately 50, 115 million businesses in the world, and 12,000 of them accept crypto. Right. So the that's. Point zero 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 one zero four percent adoption, yeah. right? And it already has the value it has. Right. So um, it's already starting in Asia, where where you can when you go to, to a store, you can you give them your bank card, and it's do you want to pay in in fiat or crypto? I think that's going to go global. I think it's going to go global in five years. Really. And then to me, uh, every time now I see a cash register, I think that, that that's going to be a point of sale terminal that's going to, that the business is going to want to segregate its, its fiat money and its crypto money and that each of those registers should have a, a vault. So the manager can, the, the, and, the ma- and again, from permissions, can the store manager can see it, the owner can see it, their boss can see it, whoever you set up as permission to have access to the vault can see what's going in and it's protected. And that, again, this, the concept is keep it, have it be a private thing to you individually. For hacker, hackers, and don't, don't view hackers anymore as like a, a, a guy sitting in his mom's basement. Hackers are nations. Hackers are, uh, it's, it's North Korea, it's Russia, as we just learned, it's, it's China. You know, they're, they're, they're Israel, the United States. Yeah. You know, there are entire yep. nations that have uh, that are looking to get involved in your in your business. And to me, I'm very passionate about privacy. Yeah. So, uh, and I think there are a million reasons to mm-hmm. want to protect your privacy that are not criminal. You know, so that 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 you want to just have the government out of your life doesn't mean you're a money launderer or, sure. or a drug dealer. So. Uh, um, well, we we good. have we have um, <laughs> Kevin. We have digital Don John Dillingers out there that are going to go where the money is, right? I mean, that's uh, uh, they're going to be looking for it online, and they're going to try to get it. Uh, John, uh, hmm. Kevin, we've got to take a break here. Thank you so much for your feedback. We've been talking to uh, uh, Kevin Barry, and he's CEO of Mintum. And thank you very much. Thank Stay you. Tuned. We'll be right back. Pocono Raceway is summertime. It's where the whole family can come for the day or camp out for the weekend. It's where fans can shake hands with the most famous drivers on earth. It's where tailgating is serious business. It's where first timers hang out with old timers and the racing is always a little tricky. Bring your friends, bring your family, just bring it. Pocono style. The ABC Supply 500, August 18th and 19th. Kids free on Saturday and half price on Sunday. I can still remember the excitement I would feel on the last day of school. No more alarm clocks and no more homework. All year long, I look forward to warm summer days playing wiffle ball in the backyard, finding a lake, river, or pool to jump in and cool off. And to finish off a long summer day, I would sit around a campfire with family and friends, sharing stories and telling jokes as we roasted marshmallows. Nothing could beat those carefree days of my youth. At Mill Spa Furniture, we believe in helping you create a stress-free home environment to build relaxing memories for you and your family. We believe you need to shop the old-fashioned way, where you actually sit on the sofa, lay back in the recliner, feel the grain of the solid wood table under your fingertips and experience our collection of comfortable yet supportive mattresses. You cannot feel comfort and support through a computer screen. So come on in during our annual floor sample and special order sale that is going on now and let our furniture counselors help you find the perfect pieces to enhance the comfort and beauty of your home. 
That's Millspa Furniture, where we have been your store for online shopping since 1858. If you've ever wondered when the right time to finally live your dream is, the answer is right now. If you stop by Maroney's Harley-Davidson on Route 300 in New Windsor, you'll see why. Check out their mini new and used Harley-Davidson motorcycles from simple stock to customized rides. Imagine the feeling of raw power and a unique look on the open road. You'll teach your kids what dreams are proclaiming now. Live your legend and find your freedom at Maroney's Harley-Davidson. Call 845-564-5400 or visit FastHog.com. Warwick Press, located at 33 South Street in Warwick, is proud to announce that Angela, formerly of Giant Copy, will be joining Warwick Press as part of their staff. Please stop in and welcome Angela. Warwick Press is your one stop for the finest in professional design and printing. Whether brochures, direct mail, newsletters, stationery, posters, and of course copying, Warwick Press, the only place for all your business and personal printing needs. For more information, visit warwickpress.net. Hi, this is Wild Baby Love. Start your Sunday with me at 6 a.m. and Gospel Tracks. I'll give you the phone number to the faith phone line and the address to the website. All that and much, much more right here on Gospel Tracks with yours truly, Wild Baby Love. Hey, this is Joe Dance, and welcome back to the Creativity and Technology Solutions for Business and Life show. And today we've been talking about technology, a new type of technology um, that's slowly gaining adaption or adoption, we could say. And uh, we've been talking to uh, two of uh, uh, three thought leaders out there in the world about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also the blockchain, uh, blockchain technology, you know, that'll make it viable. And not only blockchain's use in other businesses and industries as well. And uh, we've talked to uh, uh, Dean Anastos, and he was the founder of Blockchain Developers. We've also talked to um, uh, Kevin Barry, CEO of Amentum, and uh, he was a former assistant U.S. attorney at the U.S. Uh, Southern District Court in New York. Very interesting perspective on the future of this. And once you do get Bitcoin in his investment, uh, or even just as a, a medium of transaction, how do you protect it? And and that continues to be an issue out there. As I said before, you know, when they asked John Dillinger why he robbed banks, he very simply said, you know, because that's where the money is. And now we're going to be talking to uh, another thought leader in the industry, and that's uh, George Waller. And he is the CEO of BlockSafe Technologies. And George, very simply, um, tell us about your uh, Give us your elevator pitch for your organization. Tell us about uh, BlockSafe Technologies and what you do. Well, I appreciate that, Joe. Thank you very much for having me today. Pleasure. So what we're doing and what we're, what we're, uh, the problems that we're solving are very, you, you know, you led up to it early on about, you know, John Dillinger going where the money is, right? Why do you, bank, why do you rob banks? So the, the money today, if you look at the blockchain ecosystem, there are three components of the ecosystem. There are crypto wallets, there, and that's where we all, basically that's how we gain access to the blockchain and move our money, transact our money. Mm -hmm. There are exchanges, those are the folks that actually do the movement of the money, so they, they basically have access to that money. And whether or not you use a, a wallet that's, let's say, where you control your money down at your, your wallet on mm -hmm. your device, or you use their wallet, they're still, at one point, they have all the money in their hands. Yeah. Then there are the blockchains themselves. Yeah. And the blockchains are where um, if you, let's say, you have a corporate or a, what they call a permission blockchain, mm -hmm. um, that blockchain has you using a smart contract to basically communicate with your exchanges and banks and stuff like that. Right. So all three of those areas, that ecosystem, is where, as John Dillinger said, that's mm -hmm. where the money is. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, there is a big movement of stealing crypto money. In fact, it's gotten so big that in the first eight months of this year, over 1.1 billion, with a B, billion dollars has been stolen already. And it's like stealing cash, too, because once you steal it, it's, you really can't uh, 
You know, it, it's gone, it's gone. It's you can't Bitcoin, recover right? it. Yeah. There's no yeah. way to call. You don't call the police or the FBI or the NSA or the CIA and say, hey, uh, I'm, I open up my crypto wallet and all my money's gone out of it uh, because it's all done anonymously. It's done elsewhere. And, you know, no one knows where the money went. Um, so the problem is, what do you do? It's not like you have FDIC insurance, you know, the, mm-hmm. you know money's missing out of your bank. Yes. So, so there's, there are unique attack of vectors against each of those key areas. Mm-hmm. And, for example, your wallet that's on your, on your phone or your computer, <clears throat> your digital wallet, well, malware, the same type of malware, and mostly it's been keyloggers that have been stealing credentials, uh, you know, stealing from uh, folks for the last seven, eight years. Well, they're now using that same type of malware to steal from your wallet. Right. In fact, they're stealing your credentials when you log in, your mm. password, and they have malware today that, believe it or not, when you take uh, – so I'm going to send you a bunch of coins. You send me your public key. I basically copy your public key into my wallet because that's where I'm going to send it to. As soon as I hit the – paste in the, into the, um, um, the key area, the address, I hit send – it flips the key, it changes the key to the hacker's key. Uh-huh. And as soon as you hit that send button, it's done. It's over. The money is yeah. gone out of your wallet. And there are over $9 million a day wow. stolen from wallets. Is $9 the, million a day. Is the point of vulnerability, and I, I believe your expertise is in uh, more and more people do everything on a uh, you know, a cell phone for the most part, of you know, a smartphone. Is that where you guys – is that a, is that a, is that a major target area when you do something wirelessly like that, uh, whether it's a virus or, or, or something else? Is, is it also beyond viruses, and is, is that one of those uh, vulnerable places, and is that where you guys are, are, are hedging your bets? Well, it's um, – what we've done, Joe, is we've looked at – the ecosystem itself, and we said, all right, let's look at wallets, let's mm-hmm. look at exchanges, let's look at pro- permission blockchains, mm-hmm. and because that's where the bigger attacks are going on on the, on the blockchain side, right. and let's basically take we, you know, our parent company, 17 years in business, uh, building cybersecurity solutions. So what we've done is we've taken those technologies and we've modified them to address each of those key three key areas. Right. So for for wallets, what we do is, and by the way, there's as many transactions on desktops, digital desktops, you know, mm-hmm. uh, versus phones. Okay. So what we do is we basically took a, a we, we invented keystroke encryption technology. Mm-hmm. And so we have an application that sits on your desktop or your mobile device right. and essentially encrypts each and every keystroke. So the first thing is we don't allow the hackers, which are using keyloggers to grab your password, right. we don't allow them to grab your password. And right. then what we additionally do is we don't allow them to modify that copy and paste buffer memory area so when you're copying someone's public address, public key, and then pasting it, that they can't change it onto the, on the fly. Yeah, explain keyloggers to everybody. My recollection, I could be wrong. Uh, got about a minute and a half in the show left. Um, keyloggers, where they're monitoring what you're keying in, and they can duplicate it, right? That's exactly right. The, when you type something on a keyboard, yep. it sends them a copy of everything that you type. Right. So if you think about what you type on your keyboard all day long, it's all your pertinent information. Right. Passwords, credentials. Um, per- personal, confidential, you know, secret of information. So the, and they, they basically then get access. So if you type a website, you type a, a, a social security number, you type a bank account number, they get all of that. Right. And, and we've only got about 30 seconds left in the show. Uh, and we, we really do appreciate your time, George. So you guys are focusing on that, and you're building strong encryptions that are going to knock that down and keep you. We already out. have it. It's already... Yeah for production today, right. and we have it right on our website where people can go at uh, www.blocksafetech.com, and, you know, it's, it's under 10, it's sub $10 a month, it's a subscription service, and it protects their wallet so that the hackers can't get in there and steal the money out of their wallet. Super. George Waller, he's the CEO of uh, uh, BlockSafe Technologies. Thank you so much, and all to the other gentlemen as well that contributed to the show. Farm Talk up next.